What? You take these off. I can't see. <gasps> Good morning. The Lord be with you. Good job. Good job. Hey, you know, welcome to First United Methodist of Seymour, and I sincerely thank you for joining today because you made God a priority today, and I appreciate that. If this is your first Sunday with us, there's welcome cards in the pews that you can fill out. It's just a way for us to um, get to know you and learn about you. But then also, there are prayer cards in the pews. And so if you fill out a prayer card and stick it in the plate as it goes by, we will be praying for you. If it needs to be confidential, note confidential on there, and it'll be kept confidential, okay? And if you are online, if you would like to tell us about you, you can put it in the comments, or you can go to our website and see our email and send it to us and tell us a little bit about you. Uh, for those online also, if you have some prayer requests, if you want to share them, you can put it in the comments and then we'll be able to see them. Uh, sometimes we see them live, it's according to if we can catch it. And um, if not, once again, send us an email and then we'll be able to pray for those people for you because even though you're online, you're part of our faith family and I want to make sure that you're included. Now we have just a few announcements and I'm going to start with Terry. Good morning. Man, you guys are good. Usually I have to say that two or three times. That's impressive. I want to welcome everyone here this morning, uh, those of you who are typically here and all of our guests. Um, we are here to worship, but today is a special day for Reverend Teresa, and we will be celebrating her ordination that officially happened yesterday. Woo! <laughs> She's just a little excited, but immediately following the worship service today, go out, down, hang a left, and please come to Fellowship Hall. Um, and I heard that there are a few folks that can be enticed by cake, and there will be cake, so please, please... Please, please join us immediately following worship as we celebrate her official six-year journey. All of us have been part of that, and I know that you will appreciate being surrounded by those who love her. Thank you so much. It's been longer than six years. <laughs> um, I do want to uh, share something with you, though. I want some people we need to remember in our hearts. You know, the family of John Moore... I found out Friday night, um, actually Saturday morning, it came out Friday night, um, Dina sent it to me, that John had passed away, John Moore, at 6 a.m. on Friday. Um, John is a member of this church, he and Dina both, but he was raised Catholic, a lot of his family was raised Catholic, so they asked, is it okay if we do a Catholic service? You know, and I am never going to get in the way of a grieving family, ever, and I told Dina that. So Dina please go ahead and do a Catholic service. Um, I find it lovely how we all are able to work together because when a family is grieving, they're just grieving. Let's do what they need. And for John's side of the family especially, they needed that. So I want to be sharing that because I want to make sure that you knew why, if you got to the funeral, well, why is it a Catholic service? That is why John was raised Catholic. Also, um, the visitation is going to be today from 4 to 7 at Voss and Sons. The service will be at Boston Sands at 11 o'clock on um, Monday, but you also have visitation from 10 o'clock to 11 if you can't get there today. So I want to make sure everybody knew about that. And I hope many of you can be there to help support Dina and that entire family, that vast family of all the different kids and grandkids and everyone who are grieving the loss of John. And also, um, I'd love for us all to be there because we can show the community what John meant to all of us too, Okay. And the burial will be at Riverview. It's going to be in the mausoleum. And before we move into the service, because you know how I am, once we hit the prelude, by golly, we're in worship. So I want to share something with you. Um, if you follow me on Facebook, you got to read a short summary of my journey that I wrote yesterday morning. Because I was trying to write the sermon today, and I couldn't get past the fact that I kept remembering all these years. I'm wearing a stole today, because like Terry said, something happened yesterday. 
And um, it was years in the making and a response to a direction I had been given to God. I needed to go to seminary, and I needed to be ordained. And believe me, I could not figure out why. And really, why me? Seriously? Do you really know me? Anyway, um, those were words I heard and felt when I was discerned and, and sat and discerned this nudge, this nudge that I had for so long. And it's funny how God works in relationship with others because you know God is in the relationship business, right? Everybody knows our family business is relationships. Okay. Well, Gary Shar, my conference superintendent, when I was in Jeffersonville, I remember juggling seminary, a halftime church that I loved dearly, um, a dad, you know, I had to run back and forth to help take care of along with my wonderful sisters there. And not knowing that I had heard those words before from God, that I need you to go to seminary and I need you to get ordained. It's funny, I was talking to him about juggling it all, and Gary just felt he needed to tell me. And he said, I, I need you to hear these words. Your priority at this moment is to finish seminary. I need you ordained. And I thought that was so strange. I said, okay, Lord, I hear it again. And then jump ahead four years, and I get here, and I'm talking to Insook. One day I was up in Columbus, so I went and saw Insook, our new conference superintendent. And I was talking about all the stuff happening here and what I was doing for residency and ministry so I can finish with getting ordained and all the different things. And I was excited about all these things I wanted to do, and she was asking me to pair it back. Why do I need to pair it back? And she looked at me very sincerely and said, I need you ordained. I tell you what, God talks through people all the time to us, doesn't he? And God was talking to me through there. And as many times in the conversations I've had with God, and I'll say, okay, Lord, I'm here. In Peru, I said, okay, Lord, I'm here. What's next? When I went to walk to Emmaus, I said, okay, Lord, what's next? All these things that I was driven in to do, and each of those times, God was silent. And I just need to let you know, when I was there on that stage yesterday, waiting in line, Derek Fields went before me, who is a dear friend who also used to minister in this area. Those words kept coming to me, I need you ordained. And I paused, and the tears started to flow. I said, Lord, what's next? And Lord's very, our Lord's very consistent. I got silence. <laughs> you don't need to know. You wouldn't be able to bear it if I told you, do what you're doing now. Do what you do now. That's what I need you to do. So here I am. Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit until I'm overflowing every single day. And I'll continue to serve you here where I am. I wanted to share that with you. So at this time, and for those of us who have uh, been here before, this is that time where I ask you to get comfortable in your seat. And I mean get comfortable. Sit down, scooch around, whatever you need to be. Don't have anything pinching you because I don't want anything distracting you. And I want you during the prelude to sit and listen and just all the things on your mind. I want you to wrap them up in a box, stick it on a shelf, and say, okay, Lord, I am here because I want you to prepare your mind and your heart for worship as we go to worship the Lord. And Judy prepares us with the prelude.
Thank you, Judy, for sharing your musical gifts with us every Sunday. And I would invite you all to join in our responsive call to worship. In the beginning, when God drew a circle on the face of the deep, In the beginning was the Word with God, and the Word was God. The Word became flesh and lived among us, full of grace and truth. In every time and place, God's love is poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Let us pray together our gathering prayer. Triune God, within your own life, there is mutuality, equality, and unity in diversity. Though we are made in your image, we confess that we distort the triune life. Instead of seeking mutual welfare and the common good, we seek our own gain. Instead of living in equality, justice, and respect, we construct systems that are unjust. We devise ways to elevate ourselves over others. Holy God, forgive us. Restore in us and in our life together the divine image you intend. Make us tender in mutuality. Make us generous in equality. Make us grateful in diversity. You are both infinite and intimate, known and knowable, transcendent and transparent. In love, you have made us your own and invite us to join in your divine dance. We will never rest until we rest in you, blessed Trinity, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please stand for our opening song. I think it's a new one to this congregation, but it's a good one to boogie to. And you are allowed to dance in church because David danced. We can dance too.
is alive. I'm going to see. I don't know if you guys know this, I don't pick out the songs. I give Judy the order of worship, and then she prays upon it and takes it from there. And girl, that is what I played all the way home from Marion yesterday. Repeatedly, again and again. Raise, I had the windows down, I'm singing out loud, and I didn't care who was looking at me, I want them to sing along. <laughs> and Jimmy, I love that you still dance, because he does a video at Milroy, and he's back there dancing. When we're doing the songs. And don't worry, the video doesn't jump up and down. He does a good job with that. <laughs> okay, next, we have the children's sermon, right? Does that mean you guys need to come over here? Okay, okay, okay. Um, let's see. I think we got Michael and Sarah. Do we have anybody else today that wants to come down? Does Lennox want to come down? Come on, Lennox. Stay away from Bill, though. <laughs> Come on down. Woohoo! Look at you go, Lennox. Oh, be careful. I know we got this baby boy in the house. I love it. Come on down, Lennox. Hi. Her name is Sarah. This is Michael. Michael, you want to scoot over a little bit? And this is Lennox. Hi. He's going to go make friends, okay? <laughs> he is good. Hello, dear Lennox. Okay, I have a question for you, Michael and Sarah. Lennox can answer too, but I think I'll, you guys will probably get an answer out of you guys, okay? Does anybody know what this is, this little swoosh? Okay, whenever you see that, what do you think of? They have a motto. Okay, this is their logo, but what's their motto? Whenever you see the Nike swoosh, what do you think of? How about you? Anybody else? How about adults? Just do it. Just do it. That's what we think of, don't we? Because I think that motto we don't hear as much as we used to. And I tried to find Nike gear. I didn't have any Nike gear in my house, so I had to print something. But just do it. Just do it, right? Right, Lennox? Say, just do it. Yeah. Okay, so I want to ask you guys something. I want to ask you guys something. Do you guys see something new today? Do I, am I wearing something you haven't usually seen me wear? No. Have you noticed anything different? I am wearing a, what's called a stole, okay? It was funny, my youngest said something about, he really liked my sash. He said, oh, you're a pastor, kid. You need to know that's a stole. He said, I know it's called a stole. <laughs> It's a stole. Why do you think I'm wearing a stole today? Because I think it's I think I have a big feet. Okay. Yummy. What do you think, Michael? What do you think I'm wearing a stole today? You, in the United Methodist Church, you can only wear a stole if you have been ordained. That's an odd word. Do you know what ordained means? Sarah, do you know what ordained means? Lennox, how about you, dude? Do you know what ordained means? I think he does, but he's not going to let any of you guys know, okay? Yes, he is so sweet. I think he's adorable. Well, first of all, when you're ordained, it means I have made a lifelong, that was a hard one for me to swallow, i got to let you know, a life, hold on, a lifelong commitment to serve the Lord That doesn't have anything to do with that, okay? So hold on. We'll go to the food in a minute, okay? She's just like Jimmy, I tell you what. <laughs> okay. I know. 
the, um, it also means, it also means something else. It means that the United Methodist Church has spent a lot of time vetting me. I've had to submit sermons. I've had to um, be interviewed. I've had churches interviewed. I've had um, submitted all these answers to questions. I've had to sit in two-hour-long interviews. It is more like a, um, well, anyway, it's a tough interview. How's that? And not everybody passes. You're going to have to wait, Sarah, okay? Otherwise, I lose control. <laughs> That's what this means. And have you guys noticed something back here? Did you notice those back here, Sarah? Yeah. That's what are those? Those No, they're stoles, but you're close. Komodos are also an anime weird to weather in Japan. Okay. Komodos are in Japan. I'm losing control again. Have a seat. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Oh, my gosh. It's like walking with me. Anyway. But that's why I have all those stoles back there. The white one's from Bethlehem. The one next to it is from Vicki and Chris Griffin. They gave it to me when I graduated from seminary because they thought I got ordained then. Um, well, you know, they're, they're Catholic. They didn't know. Um, you know, I've just got different ones from different people. And actually, my newest one is on the lower right, Terry Kraus. She's a pastor at First United Methodist. Gave that to me. Do you know why Terry gave that to me? She used to be a pastor at Milroy also. So we have this common sisterhood there with that. So you're, you're going to be seeing a lot of those stoles over time. Now, I, I want to ask you guys something else, though, okay? I'm going to let you in on a secret. Are you ready for the secret? How about you, Sarah? Are you ready for the secret? Do you know when God first called me, what do you think I answered? What do you think I said? When God first said, I need you to be a minister, go to seminary, get ordained, what do you think I said? I will. You, you think I, I said I will? How about you? I said no. You got the wrong person. Give up on this idea. It's not going to happen. Not going to happen. And I said no for 15 years. I didn't tell my husband. People didn't know. Actually, Greg didn't even know I was going to be a minister until he went to walk to Emmaus and I announced I was going to become a minister. He found out with a whole bunch of other people. Sue and John Rhodes were sitting there going, woohoo! But you know what? I didn't want to do you know why I didn't want to do it. What would be a reason why you wouldn't want to become a minister? You think about it. Why would you not want to be one? You do. Oh, yes. I, you have to do hard work. How about you, Michael? I don't know why I keep asking Sarah first. I'm, I, what am I doing here? So what do you think, Michael? Why would you not want to be a pastor? To meet people what? Okay, didn't quite get that whole thing, but okay. And Sarah said, because it's a hard work, and it is. I didn't want to quit my job. I liked my life just like it was. You have to do a lot of stuff, and it gets your head tilted up, and it gets you a headache. Gives you a headache, yeah. That, that was the synopsis of that one, okay? Gives you a headache, okay? I love you. <laughs> well, you know, um, the funny thing is, throughout the Bible, and you guys will hear me say this, as we go through the Bible, because I'll call it out. I like calling it out, okay? In the Bible, nope, not yet. I didn't answer right there, okay? In the Bible, one of the things you hear again and again is, do not be afraid. Remember that? Do you remember that? Mary was told when she was going to have a baby, do not be afraid. Again and again, you hear, do not be afraid. I was scared to death. And I had to figure out I couldn't be afraid. Do you know why? God, God sent someone in my path to help me to understand, quit trying to be afraid, quit worrying about the details, do what God says, and God will take care of the rest. Matter of fact, she was one of the people who laid her hands on me yesterday. <laughs> You're a nut. You're a nut. Well, anyway, the reason I wanted to talk to you in the kids' sermon about this, because when you get older, you may have a call in the ministry. You may be 15 when you have a call in ministry. You want, I got a picture here of a man, a prior pastor friend, who was instrumental and helped me discern my call. His daughter, he's died. His daughter gave me the picture so I could have him with me because she knew he was instrumental to my answering my call. You may be in your 30s, your 40s, your 50s. What I want to tell you is, 
If you feel God put on your heart to do something, if you feel God put on your heart to do something, if you feel God put on your heart to do something, those online, if you feel God put on your heart to do something, don't be scared. Don't worry about the details. God's going to provide all the details. I need you to just do it. Do you get it? Just do it. Can you do that for me? Say, I wasted 15 years that I could have been doing something else. Just do it. There we go. Okay, we got. Are you going to pass out the candy today, Sarah? Yes. Don't forget Lennox. Okay, actually, let mom pick out the candy for Lennox, okay? And Michael, make sure you get candy too, and you guys can go ahead and sit down and color and things. Good? Are you good? Okay, you're driving? Okay. No, I don't, but how about we say a prayer real quick, okay? Hold my hand, okay? Can you hold my hand? Even with the candy in it. Can you hold Sarah's hand? Get a hold of Lennox's hand for me. Okay, I'm going to just put this back because I don't need that with me right now. Well, we're going to start the prayer. <laughs> Sarah, he did, and that's okay. We know how to clean it up. It happens. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for children. Oh, Lord, do I thank you for children. I have more appreciation for my parents' patience with me. Anyway, thank you, Lord, because whenever we talk with children, often they can show us things that we just don't even want to see, and they can see it so clearly. And we are grateful for Michael and Sarah and Lennox and all our kids online today. In Jesus' name, we humbly pray. Amen. <laughs> okay, go ahead and have a seat, guys. Out of an abundance of God's own life, we have received the abundance of God's creation, God's word, and God's love. Why then should we live as though we are threatened with scarcity? Let us return to God a portion of all that we have been given with joyous and glad abandon. Would the ushers please come forward to collect the tithes and offerings?
Let us pray. Holy God, you have poured out so much for us. The beauty of the word, world, the care of family and friends, meaningful labor, and the gift of the church. We give you thanks for these and many other gifts. Most especially, we thank you for pouring your love into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Through these offerings, may your love spill over in glad abundance that bring relief, renewal, and hope to those in need. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Living Word, you still have many things to say to us. Speak, and we will try to bear them. By your word, may the Spirit guide us into all truth, that our lives may glorify you. Amen. The scriptures this morning come from Psalms 8. Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yet, you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. And our scriptures continue today. In John 16, 12 through 15. Listen for the word of God. I still have many things to tell you but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, <coughs> but will speak whatever he hears. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The word of God for the people of God. Today is Holy Trinity, and for a lot of people, Holy Trinity is just confusing, strange. Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, all in one essence, but three persons in one. It's so confusing for hundreds of years, Christians fought about this after, you know, in the early parts of Christianity. People were exiled because of their opinions. <laughs> well, we haven't changed, have we? We still get upset about who, who agrees on what and what is happening. And, but the Holy Trinity, all one essence, three persons in one. And I actually, I like that explanation. Because that's the, the, um, that's the experience I've had with the Holy Trinity. And our scripture today helps us to understand how three work as one. Jesus is especially focused today on the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit will be the spirit of truth when things 
are tough to bear. Anybody ever have some tough things to bear? But before we begin, I think it'll help to talk about the Trinity for a minute. Um, this week, I, I was there uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at annual conference, and it was at Marion, Indiana, at Indiana Wesleyan University, and I opted to just stay in a dorm room because, by golly, I'm frugal, and I want that budget to be used for other things. <laughs> anyway, I stayed in a dorm room, and I remember, you know, because I, I, I was busy all day long, so the evenings is when I could work on the sermon, and I remember laying there and saying, Lord, what do you want me to talk about today? I'd read the scripture. I had kind of heard some words come out to me, but how do I explain the Holy Trinity today? How do you want me to explain it? And typical for God, I have to go to sleep. And about 3 a.m., God wants to talk. 3 and 4 a.m. is a good time to have a conversation with God, in case anybody doesn't know. My friend Amy has regular conversations with God at 3 and 4 a.m. And this is what came to me. Water. water. The Holy Trinity is a lot like water. Water that can be in a glass or a river flowing. Water has another form, right? You know, you have the liquid version. Also, you can have the solid version, too. Do you know what, what, what a solid version of water is, Sarah? Milk. A, milk, milk is a liquid Similar area, and cheese would be more of a solid, but we're talking water, but good try. Um, ice, snow, you know, there's a solid form. And the other form is a gas, vapor. You know, when you're boiling water and it's coming up, clouds. When you walk outside on a hot summer day and you feel like you just got slapped with a wet towel, yeah, that's that vapor side. Felt that a lot yesterday. Um, but that's how the Holy Trinity is so similar to water, is that when, when it's sitting in a glass or it's flowing in a river, is it still water? This is where you participate. Okay? <laughs> if it's in a glass or flowing in a river, is it still water? Okay? When it's an ice cube or hail or snow, or that really good crunchy ice that you can chew on whenever you get down with your soda, or that you can put in a bag and wrap around your knee or wrap around an elbow. Is it still water? Yeah. It is? Good. Well, how about when it's in a cloud? Or um, let's say that out on a farm they just went through it and they had watered all the fields and the hot sun comes out and it starts to evaporate. Is it still water? It is, isn't it? It's still water. It's still water. And the Trinity is very similar. Three separate things, but one essence. It comes in different forms. But more importantly, they work in relationship. And guess what? Water does the same thing, right? Because we, we know the cycle of water, don't we? You know, Water in a river may get pumped out, spread on a field, evaporate, goes up into clouds, and then let's say the weather goes cold and it comes down in snow form, and then when that melts, it turns into water, it turns into a liquid again, right? Okay. That kind of gets you back to how that works because in the Bible, God talks about water over the world. Water is used in baptism. When I went to the Holy Lands, and those of you who've been to Holy Lands probably understand, I stood along the Sea of Galilee, and I could sense why Jesus spent so much time there along that water. We can go days and days and days without food, but we can't go without water. Water. Was that clapping? Well, thank you very much. <laughs> water is in relationship with itself as it turns from one form to another. It's still always water. And the Holy Trinity works together in relationship in the same way. Three persons, one Godhead, no matter which one, it's still God. And, you know, I remember hearing once that in real estate, it's about location, location, location. 
the God we serve is all about relationship, relationship, relationship. I know my journey in the ministry, I saw God working in relationship again and again. People who would come by my side at the right time. Like I explained about how Reverend Dr. Gary Shar, and then four years later, Reverend Dr. Sooks Peebles said the same words I had heard many years before. We're all in relationship together. I needed to hear that because I needed to hear I was going in the right direction. And even when I told Reverend Mary Cartwright, she does not remember this congregation, this a conversation, and she laughed about it again yesterday. I was at a clergy day, I think, and she was my mentor, so I had sat down and talked to her. And she said, how are things going? This is years ago. I said, Mary, I know I've been called to go to seminary. Man, I just can't get the ducks in a row. I won't have an income. I still have a mortgage. And, you know, I'm sitting, giving her this list of reasons why I couldn't do it. And so lovingly, but so firmly, she said, you're trying to get the ducks in a row. I said, I know I got to get my ducks in a row. She said, no, you don't. That's not your job. That's God's job. Girl, just apply for seminary. The rest of it will just happen and walked away. And was she right, Greg? This is when you participate, Greg. Was she right? Were you paying attention? (laughs) He didn't know he was going to have to participate. Anyway, um, but she was so right. And I could tell you story after story of what happened after that. Because after that, I just didn't look back anymore. I knew where I was going. I knew when I was going to resign. I, well, early retire. Sort of. Anyway, in other words, what she had told me was, hand the keys to God, and would you just go sit in the back seat and shut up for a while? Which is really hard for me to do. You guys know me. So that brings us back to our scripture. Because, you know, God likes to take us on the scenic route, right? Okay. Jesus is telling his disciples he is going to have to leave very soon. And what I didn't read was some scripture before that. And what he's telling them is like, um, I've kept, you know, I've, I've, I've tell you these things because you need to know. They will put you out of the synagogues because of what you'll say about me. And they're going, yeah, like that's going to happen. Well, we all know it did, didn't it? And he shares several other things like that. But then he gets down to the scripture we read today. And he says... I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. Why, thank you. Aren't you just great today? They're very encouraging. Jesus was right. We couldn't bear them. Even today, we can't bear it if we know everything that is going to happen. Because it does over- we're overwhelmed already before anything else happens. You know, children dying of school shooting again and again, and for years, did you guys know this? For years, the number one reason why children die of of injury was car accidents. That's no longer the number one reason children die in the United States. Go look at the CDC. They put out a report on a regular basis on these things. It's now gun violence. The top three reasons a child will die from an injury is gun violence, car accidents, and overdose. We'll explain it later, okay, Michael? Okay, you you take too much of a drug and you die, okay? Anyway, it is unbearable, because I anticipate many of you have been like me. Every time you hear of a school shooting, I have to go home and pray for a while. I have to go home and cry, because I can't let myself become numb to what's happening Yes, Christ, you're right. It is unbearable. And men, women, and children killed while just getting groceries, and they were killed because of the color of their skin. I have several friends. One was ordained with me yesterday. Actually, three were ordained with me yesterday. Um, who are just people of color. We went to seminary together. 
And my experience at seminary was different than their experience because they would get targeted and I wouldn't. And we would notice that. Yes, Christ. It is unbearable. Christians attacking Christians over minute details of difference instead of working in solidarity to spread the gospel. You've heard me say, if you want to fight over this much of Scripture, by golly, go out and help me make disciples. And once we've made disciples and we've really made a dent, I'll have that conversation and I'm ready to have it today. But I'm not going to spend time on that because we need to be making disciples. Christians shouldn't be fighting amongst one another. It's what Paul warned about. And yes, Christ, it is unbearable. And people attacking each other simply because they disagree. Instead of focusing where they do agree and work from there. You know, social media is a great tool, but it also allows people to attack others without regard for that person's humanity. Yes, Christ. You're right. It is unbearable. But fortunately, our scripture doesn't end there, does it? Because Christ doesn't leave us hanging like that. He then says, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you with all the truth. And it may be unbearable that Christ sent the Holy Spirit to make it bearable, but also to prompt us with the truth so we can act upon that truth. Like children dying from gun violence. I read on social media the arguments that this is a gun problem. No, this is a people problem. You know, when someone is hitting someone with a baseball bat, you take away the bat, but you also deal with the person. We got a gun and a people problem. It's both. The spirit of truth allows us to step back out of that conversation of going against each other and see the truth. We've got a bigger problem than we like to admit to. But it also prompts us to action because in relationship with others, we can fix the gun problem. In relationship with others, we can fix the people problem. God has it right. It's relationships, relationships, relationships. I haven't... I've noticed you guys, I'll be with you in a minute, okay? People killed only because of their color of skin. Wow, we got a problem with people threatened by those that look different. And some worry about being replaced. Replaced. Well, I tell you what, the indigenous people of this land would love to have that conversation with you too. Matter of fact, um, a few weeks ago, there was a woman that got her Ph.D., and she was the first woman to get a Ph.D. in theology that was an indigenous woman. I couldn't help but just shout with joy. We are all children of God, and the spirit of truth tells us when we stop and listen that each and every person is valued, even Vladimir Putin. Relationships, relationships, relationships. Build a bigger table, not a taller wall. People are attacking each other because we disagree. And oh my, do we need to hear the spirit of truth there. I recently shared with someone that I don't go a month without someone attacking me because I'm a woman and I stand in a pulpit. Do I run away? No, no I don't, do I? Because, you know, I like to talk. Let's sit down and have a conversation. And sometimes it's a half-hour conversation. And often they are quoting Scripture, and I'm ripping it right back at them, and I'm explaining the Scripture that they just told me and what it really means, and we go popping down through that. And a half-hour later, they may not believe in Christian, that women ought to be pastors, but they think a little differently now that they met me. And I don't mind because I know it's bearable because I have the spirit of truth to help guide me. Okay. 
Because, you know, often instead of shooting off our mouths in response and, oh, I've had to work on that over the years, or typing words to tear another person down, we need to listen for that spirit of truth. For if you listen to the spirit of truth, you will see the greed in this world where people manipulate people into disagreement, hoping that they're so busy arguing they can't see the real issue at hand. If we are in a relationship and listen to one another, a new world emerges. We need to invite those in which you disagree to dinner in your home. I'm going to say that again. We need to invite those in which you disagree, not even just to have a conversation, not just to have a phone call, invite them to have dinner in your home. My favorite thing to say to people when they say, oh, I've got all sorts of friends of color, or I've got all this, and how many times have they ate at your dinner table? You need to invite them into your home. If you disagree with someone, You see, the Holy Trinity is a divine love story. God in three persons, but one flowing in and out. And I'm not a good dancer, so I really can't do this, you know, interpretive dance for you. But um, our creator who created this lovely world also created lovely inhabitants. They were trying to do the interpretive dance for me. Jesus Christ was sent to this world to reconcile humanity with God. We need to always remember that. He was here to reconcile humanity with God. And the Holy Spirit was sent to guide us and be the spirit of truth. Just as the Holy Spirit works in unison, yet in three different forms, three persons in one, we can work in unison with our fellow human beings in a similar way. Although we look different, talk different, believe different, even read the news differently, For our scripture today describes an eternal love flowing back and forth. For the one who sent Christ, to Christ, to the Spirit, back to the Father, back to us, back to the Spirit, it's like a divine love dance. It's like water. So Christ is right. Living in this world is often unbearable, and there have been many, many days of my life I have went home and just cried. Lord, how can we fix this? The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth when things are tough to bear. But Jesus had to return to our Father because he was limited in form when he was in human form. We have limitations, don't we? Ice has limitations until it melts. He had to return to our Father so he could send the Holy Spirit who provides the spirit of truth if we will just listen to the spirit of truth. That spirit of truth helps us with the unbearable, with gun violence, dehumanizing people to the point of hating them, people attacking one another, even waiting for a diagnosis. The list can go on and on because life can be unbearable. And the spirit of truth gets, guides us to make it bearable if we listen. And sometimes the spirit of truth is simply, is simply words. I know you are scared, but let me provide for you. For God is still in the relationship business. And let the Holy Spirit of truth help you to join the family business. Relationship relationship, relationship.
For our personal prayer during this time of silence, it's time I give you to be alone with God. We are in such a busy world that sometimes we don't take that time to just sit and listen. So I'm going to give you a few moments to sit and listen and just be for a few moments. What may the spirit of truth be telling you at this moment? Then we'll go to the intercessory prayer. As we move into the intercessory prayer, two things I just want to share with you. Um, First of all, I'd like to add my dear friend, Verna Martin, to the prayer list. She's been going through a lot this week, um, potentially has cancer, and and she's an oncology nurse, which makes it even harder because she kind of understands what's going on and trying to work through that. So I ask you to lift up Verna in your prayers as she continues to discover what this really is and what the treatment plan is, because waiting for a treatment plan sure is difficult. And as we do the intercessory prayer, when you hear God in your wisdom, I invite you to respond, hear our prayer. So let's go to the Lord. Holy God, you are more than we can know or even name. Yet we call on you again and again for you alone are God. We cannot live apart from you, for you have called us into your triune life. Your steadfast love surrounds us all our days. Wherever we may be, on a high mountain or a path in a shadowed valley, at the crossroads on a journey, Outside the gates of welcome or in some inner circle, you call to us, delighting in the human race. We come before you in thanksgiving for all the gifts you have given that delight us so, for the beauty of this season, for the lives of those who bless us beyond their knowing, for this community of faith by which We are nurtured and challenged for opportunities to serve you by serving others, for goals accomplished and the gift of life granted yet again today. God, in your wisdom, hear our prayer. We come before you humbly and hopeful in need. For those we know who are suffering today because of illness, whether it be in mind, body, or spirit, for those trying to make a difficult decision, for those grieving a loss, an ending, a dream deferred. We pray for healing and strength at every broken place of our lives. We long for the hope you alone can give, hope that does not disappoint us, that rolls away stones of death and despair. God, in your wisdom, hear our prayer. We pray for those whose livelihood is precarious, those who live at the edge of poverty's precipice, and there are those who live in temporary shelter and tenuous provision. In the public square, in the privacy of our conscience, Help us to find the will and the way toward a common good. God, in your wisdom, hear our prayer. We come before you earnestly and urgently for this world in turmoil, for the chaos loose in the natural world, drought and floods, earthquakes and tornadoes. Heal the earth, we pray. May those who are starving, thirsty, are left in destruction's debris, 
be restored. God, in your wisdom, hear our prayer. We pray for the turmoil we cause through war and violence, hatred and prejudice, by our indifference and by our calculation. Bring an end to our warring ways until the civilians and soldiers live in safety and peace. Root out of our hearts the seeds of bigotry and narrow-mindedness. Stir from us apathy, increase in us empathy, that we may love as you love. God, in your wisdom, hear our prayer. Holy God, we have done so much to disrupt, disengage, and even destroy what you have created and called good. Still, we are determined to delight in the human race, so make us delightful. Help us delight in you by living and playing in ways that please you. Help us to delight in neighbors near and far by living and playing in ways that restore true communion, that restore relationships. Make us delightful for all our days until we meet and greet you with joy in the kingdom that you are bringing. God, in your wisdom, hear our prayer. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn is How Great That Art. Please stand.
please open your arms to receive your blessing and charge. May the grace of Christ Jesus grant you peace. May the Holy Spirit guide you into all truth. And may the love of God fill your heart so that you may find hope in every circumstance of this life and give glory to God. And if you are feeling a call in your heart, just do it and trust he will provide. Amen.